This video is brought to you by GoldSilver.com, where you'll get free shipping, a price match guarantee, help with creating a gold and silver IRA account, global storage options, and access to our exclusive insiders program. Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and just a few hours ago, Nick Laird of Gold Charts Are Us sent me some amazing work that he has done uh, about the silver market manipulation where he has cataloged and placed on a timeline all of the evidence from a cl the class action complaint from the Deutsche Bank, this is a Zero Hedge article from last Thursday, Deutsche Bank has provided a smoking gun proof of massive rigging and fraud in the silver market. Now, there's a bunch of banks involved here, a whole bunch, that are uh, being sued in this class action suit, and Deutsche Bank blinked first, and in trade for some immunity, they decided to settle for $38 million. And now, when a, a bank settles, they're doing this to try to mitigate damages, because they knew that if they lost, that the damages would far exceed $38 million. This probably runs into the billions. There's a whole bunch of banks involved, like I said, but the evidence that Deutsche Bank turned over against the other banks is in the form of a bunch of emails and texts that went back and forth. So here's one between Deutsche Bank and HSBC. So Deutsche Bank, HSBC. Uh, I got the fix in three minutes. HSBC, I'm bearish. Deutsche Bank, ha 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 ha. HSBC, massively. Really want to sell silver. HSBC, let's go and smash it together. So they're laughing about taking the rest of us to the cleaners, basically. The, the general public is who they are fleecing here. And then from May 11th, you've got Deutsche Bank. The fix, dude, you guys were the silver market. UBS, why do you say that? Deutsche Bank, ha ha ha, on the fixes. UBS, someone told you? Deutsche Bank, my LDN. UBS, ah, okay. Deutsche Bank, you guys short some funchy, funky options. Deutsche Bank, well, you told me to, but I told no one. You just said you sold on the fix. US, UBS, we smashed it good. Deutsche Bank, <clears throat> UBS, <laughs> I'll skip this. Uh, UBS, now you make me regret not joining. UBS, by the way, keep it to yourself. So this is supposed to be, be a secret. And then in trading, people place stops very often. And on the level two platforms that all these banks have, they get to see all of the stops and they can see the clusters. People tend to pick round numbers or Fibonacci support and resistance and trend lines and things like that. And so when individual traders, amateurs on their own trading platforms, place a uh, sell stop or a buy stop, it's, it's at a certain dollar price, and people think together. It basically, it's herding mentality. And so there's these clusters. And a, a bank, if they want to do a whole bunch of buying suddenly, or a whole, usually a whole bunch of selling where they short something, uh, it'll hit because most people place stops uh, to prevent losses. And so... If they see a big cluster of, of stops, that's like something juicy that, that, that's uh, just wetting their appetite. And they can go and basically rape a bunch of people by uh, creating a bunch of short contracts where they sell a bunch of paper silver that doesn't really exist into the market, pushing the price down until it hits those, that cluster of stops. And when it, once it hits it, all those stops are, are triggered and the price falls dramatically, sometimes triggering other stop losses. It depends on how thin the market is, if they're doing after hours trading and such. Most of the stuff that they're talking about in, in this is about the fix. But here, this is about running stop losses. So this is another way that they fleece people. Uh, and if you guys have stops, oh boy, ha ha ha. Who you gonna call? Stop busters. And then they just laugh about it. And so, and here's all of the documents at the bottom of the page. 
and uh, more evidence against them. And then uh, there's an article here from Wall Street on Parade, and it's bombshell dropped in federal court, proof of silver market mafia among big banks. And so here are the guilty parties. Barclays, uh, Deutsche Bank, UBS are the main guilty parties. But there's a whole bunch of banks that have been involved in this that are being named. What they're talking about, UBS. I'm going to sell a little more. We need to grow our mafia a little, get a third position involved. Deutsche Bank, okay, I'm calling Barks 10, which is Barclays. And then down here, this is between Barclays and Deutsche Bank. Barclays, you are short, right? Barclays, ha ha ha. Barclays, we are one team, one dream. This is just absolute collusion here. Uh, Deutsche Bank, of course short. And so uh, what I wanted to show you here with Nick Laird's work is what's really interesting about it. I've got to shrink this down temporarily, and uh, you can't really read it here when it's so small. But he's got this chart of the silver price over the years. And then above there, there above the chart, there's a timeline here. And if I go back to the regular view... What you see on this timeline is there's these little magnifying glasses. And each one of these contains a, an exchange that's very, very damning evidence. And what you see here is that it tends to cluster around peaks and then they smash it down. And uh, a peak and smash. And look at this. This is the 2011 blow-off top and all of the evidence that uh, was turned over and they smash it down and they smash it down again. All these exchanges back and forth between the banks that are involved in setting the international silver price once a day. And they have the knowledge before it happens of what's going to happen. But when you click on these, this is just August 5th. So you click on this and you can read the transcript uh, going back and forth of the different emails between the different parties. Uh, it's very, very fascinating. And then if you scroll further down in the article, you'll see some more of the evidence. And you see things like, uh, you know, this is the price for all of 2011. Here is the price for all of 2012, the average price, the average price for all of 2013. And in 2011, if you look here at the London PM silver fix, look at how silver falls here. And they knew this was happening. So this is the average, all the trading days, it's the annual average price change. It's And, and it's above and below the zero price line. So this is the uh, change during the day. And if you look at how silver fell in 2011 on the average right at the fix, and then you look uh, where the New York Globex is closed here. This is an impossibility that uh, the silver price could not do this in a free market. It also couldn't do this in the free market. And this is something that we've been following. There's 2013, 2012, 2011, 2010, 2009. So this has been going on for a long, long time. There's the PM Silver Fix all the way back in 2008. And so uh, these are very interesting, uh, highly interactive charts that Nick has created here. I uh, urge you to go and take a look at them uh, because the evidence is very, very clear. And the great thing about this illegal activity for us, if you're a, not a trader, it's the traders that have been getting screwed here. Somebody that buys and accumulates has been able to buy and accumulate at far lower prices. If you're in the trading market and you're playing on the futures exchanges where the, the price of gold and silver is created, basically, if you're trading futures contracts and options on gold and silver, these derivatives, then if you get punished several times by these guys taking your currency 
if if they're uh, ripping you off and screwing you, then uh, after a while you get tired of it and you give up. You stop betting on the long side. So there's more shorts than there are long at that time, and the price falls. And so it's a cumulative effect. Over the years, gold and silver have been pushed down and people that are accumulators and uh, where you're betting for the long run that gold and silver will go to far higher prices, you get the chance to buy gold and silver at an artificially suppressed price. And I have been following this for years. I wrote about this in 2007 when I was writing my book. And if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, what you'll see is if you uh, go to playlists, and then you scroll down, there's 11 videos going all the way back to 2010 about the uh, gold and silver price manipulation, the manipulation that happens on the COMEX, the manipulation that happens on the FIX, and that's what the uh, Deutsche Bank settlement is all about, and uh, gold and silver leasing, which is not talked about in uh, the articles that I just showed you. But so some of the manipulation has been completely exposed. What's interesting is uh, throughout the years, all of the people that were saying that the precious metals markets were manipulated were called lunatics. They were in the tinfoil hat club, and they are now proven correct. So thank you very much for listening. If you got anything from this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.